Well, howdy, y'all. Thanks for coming on down to Sculpture Studios. We got a mighty fine project here today. Something nice and pretty for Tornado Springs down in a particular theme park here in the UK. Oh, it's in the UK. Poulton's Park here in the UK, to be exact, where we're delighted to be creating some large-scale outdoor theming for these guys once again. In preparation for April 2022 and a brand new ride on the horizon, Portons Park are once again pulling out all the stops, slamming the theme back into theme park and getting in touch with yours truly. The Farmyard Flyer, a more family-friendly roller coaster alternative to some of the more thrill-seeker options, is in need of something special for the ride entrance. We're going to be creating some spectacular signage, some hay bales, a fiberglass cow alongside its baby calf and a dog called Benji, so let's take you into the studio. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in England, UK, around Europe, and across the pond to the USA and everywhere else. We're creating another piece of sculpture for Walton's Park, and it's going to be this tail wing with this signage going across it. And we're going to create it in polystyrene first, make a five glass cast and everything else, uh, and artwork it and add metalwork. The bit we're going to start with first is we've taken this band of uh, planking with signage, we straightened it up and that's the total measurements of the whole thing. So let's see how we go from here. The very beginning stages, so that's here, Kevin and Liam are cutting out blocks to create the signage itself. Uh, we've got to start somewhere so we might, we might as well start here. Wish us luck. Well, what can I say? It's a great feeling to be creating something large scale again after the catastrophe that was the last couple of years, and in particular, something for a theme park. So thank you very much to the team at Portons Park for coming back to us once again. The first project we undertook with these guys was for Peppa Pig World, creating numerous characters for the Grampy Rabbit's boat ride. We also created a giant pumpkin bursting out of a greenhouse and Mr. Skinny Legs the giant black spider, both for Halloween prop specials and both inspired by the children's television show as well. When Tornado Springs was first being created for the park, between 2020 and 2021 we created the front end of an orange pickup style truck for a gift shop display. And here we are once again to add something new outdoors for the same area. If you fancy taking a look at any of these other projects, I've left a couple of video links below in the YouTube description, but don't you dare go anywhere just yet. Have a watch of those afterwards, or maybe save them for another lunchtime or toilet break. As ever, we're beginning this project blocking out from polystyrene. The majority of what you see here on our channel is done right here by hand in our studio. So these have all been mapped out and hand cut using hot wires, and now we've gone to town with stonemason rifflers. Rather than simply airbrushing grain on later to give that wood effect, we're giving this a more three-dimensional sculpted element for that punchy, rustic and weathered board look, and the airbrush work will simply accentuate these details even more later on. Now, you won't believe the amount of emails and messages we've received even since our last video about our secretly sourced sticky back tinfoil. Please get in touch if your curiosity is getting the better of you. The foil basically protects the foam from the resin going on top. The foil's a non-messy material, easy to apply, or we make it look easy, put it that way. <laughs> You're sneaking up on me. It's right in front of you. I didn't see it. Along with the actual signage, we're creating an aeroplane tail sticking out of the ground. Not only does this need to be visually strong to look at, but at over 4 metres tall, it certainly needs to be structurally strong as well. This needs to support the combined weight of the planks, the lettering and the engine badge at the top held up over the public's heads and be solid enough to not be able to twist and blow in the wind as that sign and the tail of the plane won't be particularly aerodynamic if hit from the wrong side. 
Though we'll be creating custom metal work later on to install inside the job, it's important to bear this in mind now so we can plan ahead with the carving and any glass fibre work conscious that we need to allow space for this. Though at first glance it's a relatively simple shape, it's a lot of measurements, working out and mapping onto the polystyrene to ensure that we get the most out of each block without too much wasted material. This will still need to be carved of course to refine the shape, but it's helpful to get this as close as possible for the initial cuts to save any major alterations later on. the artwork concept images, there are plain wheels mounted on either end of an axle hanging from the wooden sign, and a wheel sitting on the floor propped up against the tail of the plane. A half wheel master pattern is being super satisfyingly turned on the lathe here, careful not to turn anything too large Aiden, we don't want to burn the motor out like last time. Then we're creating a fiberglass mould in order to create six identical casts. The casts will be laminated together back to back to form three complete fiberglass wheels. When creating replica casts in a production run, it's always important to clean up and finish everything properly through every stage of the process. Cleaning up the master pattern and the production mould is just as important, if not more so, than just cleaning up the final casts. Any imperfection in this mould will naturally be replicated numerous times over in every single cast that's laid up. So finishing the earlier processes properly will save on 5, 10, 20 times the same work over and over on every model. This will significantly help speed up the process and result in a much higher standard of finish. And trust me, you'll be thanking yourself later. For the sign and the plane, we're not going to be taking a mould as there's only going to be one of these. Instead, we're going over everything with a blanket coat of glass fibre and resin and then working up the surfaces to suitable finishes. With the plain tail, not only should this be smoother anyway, to look as though it's made from sheet metal, but this is also going to be within touching height of the public. We need to make sure this isn't rough or sharp to the touch for any little wandering hands, or, or big hands, hey, sometimes the parents are the worst for it, don't touch, it's not yours. Simultaneously, we're going to be starting work on other elements of the project, Benji the dog to begin with, and soon we'll be cracking on with the cows and the hay bales. Can I get a yee-haw? Sandpaper, work my way down the future. 
Sticky backed foil strikes again, but this time we're also going over with an extra layer of a thinner foil and a water based wallpaper paste. This allows for a quick extraction of the polystyrene pattern from the fiberglass shell when it comes to taking this apart later. We've carved out a square window section so that an LED Q-Time sign can be installed later on. We've been provided with one of these units so we're going to make sure this is a nice snug fit. When all of the fiberglass work is complete, it's time to start working up the finish. We're using a combination of resin flow coats to begin with to help lose that fiberglass matte texture, and this is topped with car body fillers. Everything is sanded back, reapplied, and sanded down again and again in order to gradually work up the surface. These sorts of processes go, oh, look at that, perfectly smooth, well done, Ruth. With Benji the dog, we're going over with thicker flow coats to give this a rugged fur look. These sorts of cleaning up processes are often breezed over in just a few clips, but this is where the real time needs to go into the project. Here you can see the polystyrene master pattern being removed. We'll chop this up into more manageable sized pieces and use this on another project later down the line and this will save on too much waste material. The thin foil and wallpaper paste did its job, allowing for easy extraction and creating a hollow space for the metalwork inside. We now need to get on and join the two halves back together. created a wooden area here and a wooden area on the inside all laminated on nice and strong and we're going to laminate and weld these areas to here so then bolts actually stay in the back surface and then poke through the two. Up here we've got um, steel that runs right across the, the whole board right from up here to up there somewhere that's along the top to give that a bit of strength along the top and we're going to make sure that bottom area in there is pinched together as tight as we can. What's happened over here, lads? Got it in the wrong place, haven't we? What's, what's going on? <laughs> that should be over there, about 200 mil, the top piece. Oh, for God's sake. Get it off there, Kev. Get it off. Uh, Ruth. I'll come down there, I'll see that. <laughs> I love it out from the side. With this being a massively top heavy piece of sculpture, we're creating a large mild steel base plate that's going to be planted under the ground with metalwork running up through the structure. The bottom 50 millimeters of the plane can also be embedded into the ground so the whole piece should feel nice and solid. Hopefully the back of the wooden top section will be bolted against some woodwork on location just to give this an added element of strength and save wanting to catch or twist in the wind. Belt and braces.
time to start putting everything together. In order to finalise exactly how the metal works fitting inside the job, we'd better put the job together in the first place and offer everything up. This is going to be positioned, held in place and laminated together from both the inside and the outside. Purely a fiberglass structure at this stage and then we'll see how the metal work currently fits inside before Aiden goes ahead and reinforces everything. We're going over with a couple of tabs first just to keep everything in place and then we're reinforcing with glass fibre mat. Going over the exterior means there'll be no split lines or cracks if there's ever a bit of movement, but of course this means it now needs to be thoroughly cleaned up, flow coated with resin and smoothened down to blend in with the rest of the fuselage. metal work. Now that we've tacked a couple of pieces in place inside the job, we really need to get this back out. Aiden needs to go to town and reinforce all of the internal structure, re-welding all of the tacked points and adding extra pieces in, and I mean, health and safety probably wouldn't advise testing a frame in such a way, but you can see how much faith we've got in Aiden's welding. We've also got someone in for a little work experience, something that doesn't happen too often here. Tom's joining us in the studio for a couple of weeks' work. Though he doesn't get a caricature after only a couple of weeks. That's something you really need to work towards. Hi Ruth. Hello. What are you up to today? Uh, refilling, refilling, refilling and refilling. I just want to get it perfect. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. Remember this is seen from a, quite a long distance. But I quite like the idea that you're trying to get it as good as it can be. So, no, it is looking nice, I must admit. It's looking really good. As always, particularly with a blanket coat of glass fibre, where this hasn't been pulled straight from a mould, this requires a lot of cleaning up. The gel coat layer of resin floods the surface and does somewhat remove the majority of the fiberglass texture, but this is far from perfect and far from the finish we're looking for. A good few days is spent sanding down and as Roof says, refilling and refilling. We repeat the process until we're happy with the outcome. To make sure the metal work is all in good shape to be permanently fixed inside the fiberglass body, the weld lines are cleaned up and the whole frame is treated with a red oxide for rust protection when it's exposed to the elements. So all of the lads and lasses have been working exceptionally hard. Getting this outside, getting it all rubbed down. Now I'm going to take it inside, give it a prime, see how the surface looks, leave it overnight and see if it needs any work in the morning before we go on with the 2K car body paints. We've ordered all of the paints in the codes that they've sent us. whole thing's going to be coated in a yellow, orange details on the top, brown obviously for the, uh, the planks for the sign and some blue for the lettering. Trap door section on the back here, where we can gain access to the inside and the theme park staff can gain access on site for the queue time box fitting, we're going to be using anti-tamper bolts around the edge and these will blend in with the rest of the rivets on the plane body. 
The idea is that the surface of the body needs to look like panel sheeting, so this trapdoor section should blend right in. Beginning on the artwork now, we've been provided with colours that we need to match for the base layer of paints. At first glance, these colours look a bit too cute and cartoony, perhaps a little too saturated, but that's why they're only a base layer, and it's our job to dishevel this to blend in with the rustic aesthetic of the ride area. Grooves are being cut straight into the surface, and rivets drilled out, and you'll soon be able to see the effect that this has on the overall look. It's all of these extra 3D details, like the carved grain on the wooden planks, the fur on the dog, and areas like the plane surface that just bring things up a notch. Rather than simply a flat paint finish, it just takes everything to another level. Speaking of another level, we better get the big ladders out. When all of the 2K base layers have been applied, it's time for more fine detail. For the planking on the sign, Aiden is emphasising the 3D depth of the carving and dusting over the flat base colour. The insignia on the tail of the plane is being mapped out, and remember that any detail going on the plane, whether it's drawings, paints, vinyls, everything is applied by hand. To go along with the plane and the dog, we're also going to be working on a few other items for the ride area. The client has asked for some hay bales to be made that can withstand a little endurance outside in the elements. Starting with wooden crates, we're impregnating real hay or straw, I never know which one's which, one of them's a blade of grass, the other one's a round grass? I don't know. We're impregnating one of these with a resin so that it both sticks together and sticks to the wooden box, but it also has a form of wind and moisture protection. If this were a real straw or hay bale, whichever one you prefer, left untreated, you could have small animals nesting inside, and this would eventually break down. We're also going to be creating a large cow with a fiberglass cast taken from our existing mould, and this is actually one of the few sculptures that we retain a mould for here at the studio. A baby calf to go alongside it, we've purchased online on this occasion, purely for speed, as this was a later decision by the client, and we've still got a deadline to meet. That doesn't mean the work on these cows is over, far from it. Naturally, a cast from the mould of the large cow needs to be extracted, joined, cleaned up, prepped and artworked, and this is only fitting that the baby has the same treatment, so they both look like they're related. I've got a joke for you. Why does a cow throwing up sound so good? Because it's moosic. Come on, don't act like we don't treat you guys good. So we're genuinely interested when and where people watch our videos. Are you having your dinner at home? Are you on a lunch break at work right now? A commute home on the train? Are you currently on an extended toilet break and need to be getting back to work? Or is this the kind of thing that you just like to watch in bed to fall asleep to? We try and keep all of our videos as child and family friendly as possible, so this is something that you guys can watch with your kids if they're interested. We know that we've got a little super fan called Harrison over at Hollywood Haunter. So yeah, we'd love to know where and when you guys get your fix of Sculpture Studios. Have you hit the notification bell underneath to be told when one of our new videos comes out? Or are you the kind of person that's gradually working your way through the videos on the channel and finds the latest project every now and then? Let us know below. Yeah, this, this, is, this is absolutely too bad. I, 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 I can't really fault it. I think it looks, this is, personally, I think this looks absolutely... 
Well, how's that for a positive client visit? Mark and Dawn have come down to the studio to take a look at the progress of the work. Up to now we've been sending regular updates via photographs and over email, but it's great to have the clients come down in person to see the real thing. We're making sure that everything meets their approval before we carry on with any extra work, as it would be a shame for us to completely finish the artwork if anything did need to be changed. For now, they're happy with us to crack on with the next part of the process. Over the top of the car body paints, we're going on with a 2K lacquer. This, we very much hope, is expected to be outside for many years to come, so we're giving this a few passes of a durable exterior finish. At the moment, the current artwork is a little flat matte, so this semi-sheen lacquer, and particularly on the metal elements like the plane, also helps to bring this to life and pop out in the sunlight. So here we are with the farmyard flyer sign. This is the first time it's been lifted, suspended by our winch and attached to the main tail. But now these straps are slack, so the tail section is now taking the entire weight. Artwork is pretty much there. Aiden's gone round and rusted up all of the rivets, all of the old school panels. So it looks really oldy woldy and worn. It's been sitting there for a while out and weathered, so we're looking forward to the client seeing that. Kevin and Aidan have gone over and secured all of the artwork, lacquered everything down. Kevin did a fantastic job on this top section here, all hand painted, all hand decaled. The farmyard flyer sign, fantastic vinyl work from Pete Frost from Stanford Signs as per the norm. And this flyer section, which is where we believe the people are going to be walking under to enter the queue line, the original artwork didn't include this bottom plank and this loop was off the bottom and the bottom of the, the F was off there as well. And we recommended adding this bottom plank just so people couldn't jump up and have something to grab hold of. So the most that anyone can do walking through is just touch it with their hand, jump up and touch it. And the only other element that needs to be made now, like the wheel down here, which simply bolts on, we fix it in a few places so that hopefully it can't be rocked around too much. We've got another couple of wheels they're going to be secured via an axle in the middle here. Bolts to the job there so it can't swing around too much. And we've got some 50, 60 mil rope that hangs off the end of there. We're going to secure it in the correct position by impregnating the rope with resin. This can then travel separately. And once it's all installed on site, the impregnated rope can be added onto the job, bolted to the plane and bolts through the rope as well to the planks. But we're looking forward to the client seeing this. Now that all the artwork's pretty much there, we're adding all the final elements. Well, let's get a look at that rope. And that's gonna be the thickness of the rope that's gonna hold up the, uh, the axles. That's where we're at so far. Liam's just been inside, bolted the two bolts to the back of the sign. Kev's gone on and bolted the back of the sign up there. But at the moment, that is taking the full weight of the sign. And it's gonna be balanced out slightly by the wheels on the other end but we're really happy all round with how everything's gone. On to the home stretch now, folks, adding the final element to the plane. These ropes have been wrapped as closely in keeping with the concept artwork as we can and impregnated with resin. Remembering that everything you see here still needs to come apart for transportation, we've added bolting points on the back so this can be securely installed onto the job when it's mounted on site. We've added a metalwork bracket behind the ropes just to double up on the strength, but this is now ready to artwork in keeping with the rest of the sculpture. Now, we can imagine that when there's quite a break between our project videos, it might seem like we haven't got much going on. Nothing to show or no work in the studio, something like that, but usually it's quite the opposite, and the current projects are requiring all of our immediate attention and it's all hands on deck. We always endeavour though to get back to the video creation once the work is complete so that you guys can stay up to date on what we're creating and trust me, there's still plenty more up and coming in the pipeline. 
as a little reward for every one of you who have made it thus far, we've not only cranked the music up for our dance break, but also a little farmyard photo shoot before the job leaves the studio. You are more than welcome. Just taking a second to say that we really appreciate all of the patience and the continued support of our followers wherever you guys are in the world, with particular appreciation to all of our subscribers and our active patrons. If you haven't already taken a look, I've left a link in the description below, and I'll mention again at the end, this link leads you to our Patreon page, where you can actively contribute to our studio videos. You can support us for as little as a couple of dollars or a couple of pounds, and it all goes towards everything that you see being created for you in this video today. Hopefully, our videos are only getting better and better, so we'd love to have as many of you guys on board as possible. A massive thank you to Coaster Aaron, Theme Park Extra and Theme Park Worldwide for their fantastic behind the scenes peeks of everything being installed. You can take a look at more of their content in the links below and of course a big thank you to the team at Portons Park. Theme Park projects are very much something we love being involved in so thank you for coming back to us once again and we look forward to any projects in the future. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below and for all of our true diehard fans out there, of course, you can now become a patron of our studio. All of our supporter contributions go towards the creation of these videos so if you guys enjoy our content, you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming projects like these guys here, so visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.